Hello everyone, the Notebook LM from Google. Lots of people have talked about this tool. They say it generates podcast-like audio for each note they take in and is able to have a very interactive two-person talking style of audio generated. It creates scripts, creates other notes, summarizes the information that you input, etc. So in this video, I'm going to go through how to do that and also analyze what's in the Notebook LM from Google. First of all, this is basically like RAG for large language models. Now, if you don't know what RAG is, you can Google it. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. We've talked about it a lot in previous videos, how you can build your own RAG locally in Olima using any RAG tools and mount your language models to work in the RAG. An easier way to understand it is that this is like a knowledge base that you build on top of language models. For example, I have just added some information before this video, and it's a research paper for interactive 3D scene generation from a single image. This information is inputted by me, and you can add sources. For example, here you can put your own PDF documents or text files. You can add other website links or paste the text on top of that. There's a limit of 50 sources for each topic of what they call a notebook. Here, the notebook can add 50 sources, and you're able to have all this list on the left side in this menu bar. You can see whichever one you want to enable and use or just select all the sources that are relevant to this notebook topic. So here, I'm doing research about this research paper, Wonder World. This is using a single image to generate a 3D scene environment. So basically, I have not looked at that information yet. I just grabbed all those links and PDF papers. This is the research paper and I imported that with the source link and uploaded PDF files here. Then it pops up something like this. They call it the note guard. This notebook guide is going to generate an audio overview. Now this is the wow factor for a lot of people that recently talked about it on YouTube that you can use these tools to make your own podcast and something like that. But in reality, is that really true to make a podcast? Because look, if you want to make a podcast with two people talking to each other, you've got to have your own unique voice. Even in AI, I suggest having your own unique voice. Like what I did, use my own voice and tune the pitch higher and create another very unique AI voice for voice cloning. Here, you basically cannot select whichever voice or any voice cloning models to use for this audio overview to speak about the information that you input. So it's going to be a very general voice. If everyone is going to download this audio overview from all the notebooks that they create, there will be many podcasts everywhere that have the same voice or similar voice talking then that's not going to be attractive for having a podcast in reality. So I think this is just a gimmick or an easier way for lazy people to understand their information. Because if you're really doing research and you've got like 50 sources of file information, then you cannot read all of that. This audio overview is going to help you summarize those things and speak in a very casual style or very casual manner, like two people talking, and let you understand what the information is about in your research. So here's a summarized paragraph, a very brief one paragraph summary even. I imported some other information in other notebooks and it's doing the same here. Here are some suggested questions from the large language models that this AI tool generated based on the information that they analyze. And you can see some specific questions that are different. It's not general questions for everything. As you can see, those questions here are specifically for the input from the source, and you can generate a timeline or study guide and even a table of contents about the source that you input. And all the notes are popping up right now when it's finished generating. And you can see there's basically a big summarizer for whatever you input to this notebook. That is basically what the notebook LM is creating. And you see all this point form art well, it would be a very good tool for people studying and doing research, especially students from universities. They can use that for information research and studying. For example, another AI model that I recently looked at is the Depth Crafters. Now, here's a comprehensive overview that is created using point form and some facts as subtitles for each piece of information I imported. It's not an overview including everything or grabbing all the sources and doing a big summary 
overall. Actually, as you can see, it's divided into different sources. For example, here is source 2 from my website links, and it creates another list of point forms here. Source 3 is from my imported GitHub links, and it generates another list of point forms here. I don't really like this kind of listing. I expected something better because it's using Gemini from Google as the backend language model, which is able to take a large context size. If I import, let's say, only these three sources for that much volume of information, then it would be okay to make a comprehensive overview with that much information. But imagine if you have 50 sources, which is the maximum number here. If you have 50 sources of information imported here, and if these tools generate a comprehensive overview for each source list by list, then that's not going to be very helpful as a comprehensive overview. I expect an overview of everything from what I import in the source. Making just one list from everything I import here would be way better as a comprehensive overview note in my notebook for researching and studying. So basically, that's a drawback for me when I see the generated result from the overview of these notebook tools. Basically, there are a lot of open source rag tools. If you just Google it, you know, get the rag tools on GitHub, you can see a lot of open source rag tools. You can build a knowledge base or embedded DB, adding extra information knowledge on top of the large language models. And it can be done privately or locally on your machines. So I don't think this is a gimmick or something really special. But the only gimmick is the audio generation here for the audio overview of everything you import. And this is like a workflow that you can build as well, asking the language models to go through every piece of information that you imported, make summarizations with voiceover scripts, and then use two AI voices to speak about those voiceover scripts. And there you have an audio overview. I can imagine that kind of workflow can be done locally. You can do that with GPT or any local large language model as well. So yeah, that's basically it for Notebook LM. The only giggle I can say is the audio overview again, and you guys can check it out. I won't play this six minute demo here. You guys are gonna be bored by that. Um, but the voice over here is too general. It's just not having your own voice or your own AI cloned voice to import into the Notebook LM and use that AI cloned voice to speak about the content. Then that's not really for podcast tools. Actually, if you really want to use a podcast tool, then you should at least customize the voice with your own voice cloning. So yeah, that's it for this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya. Understanding of depth over time, even when the scene is changing rapidly. No more flickering, no more chaos. It's like giving computers the gift of depth perception. And that's a game changer for all sorts of applications. So for those of us who aren't AI wizards, how would you explain the magic behind Depth Crafter? Imagine this. What if we could teach AI to, like, feel textures or even smell aromas in a digital environment? Now, that would be a truly immersive experience. Right. The possibilities are truly